Welcome to The Musical Show. I'm Sarah, and today we're going to talk about the different types of people who make musicals great. Now, if you've been in musicals before, this may not all be new information for you as we talk about the different roles involved in musical theater. If that's the case, we made a handy button. You can click here and jump to the end of the episode where we have some questions that could really benefit from your expertise. It takes a village to make a musical, and it takes an incredibly talented village to make a good musical. I think composer and lyricist team Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein II put it best when they said, not much less complex than war is the musical theater. A quick glance at the theater program for any musical show reveals a staggering number of separate elements. So what are those different elements you'll find in your musical program? Let's count. One, we have the composer. Of Rodgers and Hammerstein, that's Richard Rodgers. The composer writes all the songs in the musical, which are collectively known as the score. The composer usually works with an orchestrator who arranges the songs, usually written for a piano, for a full orchestra. The composer also works with a lyricist, Oscar Hammerstein II of Rodgers and Hammerstein, who writes all the words for the songs in the show. The book writer writes the book or script of a musical, any words that are spoken in between the songs. Because the book writer is responsible for shaping the plot, defining characters, and helping to decide when the songs belong in the show, author John Kenrick claims, the book writer gets almost no credit if a show succeeds and most of the blame if it fails. Sometimes a new writer will update an old book, like when Harvey Firestein added jokes about sushi into the 2015 NBC production of The Wiz Live. Now, any production of an old musical, whether or not the book changed, is called a revival. Of course, you'll need actors. The director helps the actors find their characters and steers the concept of the show. Most shows use a choreographer to help design the dances, and some shows need a licensed fight choreographer in order to make sure that no actors injure themselves when they duel on stage. During the run of the show, many people need to be at the theater every single night to make sure the production goes smoothly. Those people include the stage managers, the company manager, the stagehands, and did I mention the music director? I'm sure I'm still forgetting something. Oh, that's right, we need money to pay all of these people. That's up to the producers. Now, before about the 1980s, producers used to be one or two people who had a lot of creative control over the show because they ponied up all the money to make the whole thing run. So people like David Merrick or Florence Ziegfeld had big legacies. After the 1980s, musicals became so much more expensive to produce that you'll often see big company names above the title, as well as individual investors. There are also the people promoting the show, creating educational materials, and showing you to your seat. Now, if all of this sounds like an impossible number of people to be involved, trust me, it's not. But at the same time, people at smaller theaters or regional theaters outside of New York City may be doubling up on roles. Your actor friend in New York who has to wait tables to pay her bills may be performing evenings at an off-off-Broadway theater. That means a theater that has fewer than 100 seats or doesn't involve a majority of actors who are in Actors' Equity, the Actors' Union, because, oh yes, the theater world also includes unions. <laughs> Which, if you're guessing, means more people. Yeah, even with all of the people we've discussed, your musical is still being performed by amazing actors who are naked on a dark stage with no microphones. Because that's right, we left out the designers. Now, the Tony Awards, which are the big theater awards, got a lot of flack in 2014 when they eliminated the word for best sound design. Sound designers are hugely important to a musical. They help create sound effects, they make sure that every seat in the house hears what they need to hear, and they're really responsible for the whole cohesive sound design of the show. And the Tony Awards don't even give out awards for the folks on Broadway who are responsible for designing wigs, makeup, props, or projections. So at the end of every future episode of The Musical Show, I'm going to bring one of these people into the spotlight and make sure to tell you about a technical designer. When a musical works well, an army of people come together to create a musical world. Now that wasn't always the case, and we'll talk about why and how the 1943 musical Oklahoma changed things in our next episode. Until then, share in the comments about which designers you think we should spotlight. I'd also love to know what roles you played, either on stage or behind the scenes. Thanks for watching The Musical Show. Please subscribe, hit like, and let us know what you think. So that goes to show something, and I forgot the end of the line. <laughs>